Hello, welcome back to ICS 100. So today we're going to be looking at um, you know different types of crimes that you that are able to be committed. So um, you know, got to be careful when you're using the internet and technology because you know not everyone can be trusted. So you want to make sure that when you're using technology that you use it wisely and kind of always be um, aware that not everyone that's using technology can be trusted. So. We want to make sure that you know when we're using things or visiting sites as well that we're using them um, wisely, and you know we're not going to be providing people with information that's you know pertinent to us, such as like social security numbers or even credit card information. So you know you got to be careful when using technology, and so we're going to actually look at um, a couple of different elements that you know, involve crimes that can be used um, with technology. So let's jump into the slides and look at the first one. So the first one is rogue wireless hotspots. And what you might see, you know, when you're looking at a networks, you know, you might see one that comes up with the word free in it. Um, don't always trust these because, you know, it might not actually be free. And you might see these in locations where you actually have to pay for a service. You know, so keep that in mind, such as like an airport where, you're in an airport and usually a lot of airports will charge you for um, you know internet access so when you're seeing ones that say free what it might be is someone else that's kind of set up this rogue access point um, as well so you don't want to use them um, if you're if you have any questions go and ask someone that works there you know they're going to be able to provide you with information about the legitimate you know access point the uh, legitimate um, wireless hotspot that you can use so you know, if you have any hesitation, always make sure to go and ask someone because it's a lot easier to take that five minutes and ask someone. Then it's going to be for you to go and like change all your um, credit card information or bank account logins and things like that. So keep that in mind as well. You know, let's jump back in and see why we don't want to use these rogue wireless hotspots. You know what they're going to be able to do. The person that's running it, it's going to be able to capture your data. And when they're capturing your data, they're capturing all your info as well, such as the websites you're logging into, maybe your usernames and passwords and other elements as well. So, you know, you want to make sure that when you're using, um, you know, going and connecting to an access point or, you know, a wireless network, you want to make sure that it's, you know, a legitimate, a legitimate one. You don't want to go and connect to any of these that you think are free. Um, keep that in mind. You don't want to have to deal with, you know, changing all your information. It's not an easy thing to do because, you know, we have a lot of different sites with different passwords and everything. So do keep that in mind. Um, so let's jump back in and look at a little bit more about our rogue wireless hotspots. So as well, we don't want to use any random wireless networks. Um, only use ones that you actually know about um, as well. You know, as I kind of mentioned already, if you don't know you know, if you're in a company and you don't know their wireless network information, go and ask them. You know, they're going to be able to provide you with this information. And as I also mentioned, if you're unsure of anything, do not use that access point. It's always easier not to get online and protect your identity and your personal information than it is going to be for you to use it really quick and then have to go and realize, ah, oh, I shouldn't have used that one. You know, this guy captured all my information. You know, they might be able to... Um, Get your social security number as well you know identity theft that's a huge issue that we have to worry about as well using technology so you know with these wireless access points if you're unsure of anything about them just don't use it um, you know it it's just that easy if you if you have any hesitation you know think twice about it and just don't do it as well so let's jump back into the slides and look at another um, type of cyber crime that we have as well so this one is uh, data manipulation. And what this is, as the name suggests, is basically, you know, changing data. So manipulating the data. And what happens is, you know, people might gain unlawful entry into a website and leave a prank message. So you might see that, you know, a website's been hacked. And what they've done is they've changed the front page. And they've manipulated the data to maybe say something that's not true um, or post other images or sayings that, you know, make the company look bad as well. So keep that in mind that, you know, this data manipulation is basically like changing the data, you know, um, changing websites and everything as well. So keep that in mind. And, you know, we had um, the government's actually looked into this and has tried to, 
make rules and regulations to help prevent people from doing this. So if we jump back in, we can actually go and look at this. And so the government has actually gone and created the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. And this actually came about in 1986. So it's been around for a while and you know it's gone through different revisions and everything as well. So, and what it basically did is that it is a crime for an unauthorized person to view, copy, or even damage data that you know that they're not authorized to. So you could see, you know, if you're not authorized to view something, it is now a crime. As well, you're not allowed to copy this data if you're unauthorized, and as well, you can't go and damage the data. So you know, these are things that are now illegal due to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. And, you know, you could see that it's been around for a while, so it's not something that's new that our government is now looking into. It's something that's been around and has been a hot topic as well for a while now. I mean, 1986 is, you know, a long time ago um, for some of us. And as well, if we jump it back in, you know, we can look, as I kind of mentioned, identity theft is an issue. So if we can jump back in, we can look at some of the details about identity theft. So identity theft here, you can see um, social security card. Obviously, it says uh, you know, it's not a legitimate one um, as well, so keep that in mind. And basically, identity theft is using someone else's identity for your own personal gain. So getting a credit card in someone else's name, buying a bunch of stuff, and you don't pay for it. So it's basically stealing using their information as well. With identity theft, you have to worry about someone ruining your credit history. You know, that's a huge problem. Um, you, you know, when you're going out later maybe to purchase a car or a home, you know, your credit history is going to be looked at. If you have poor credit history, you might be denied for that loan as well. And, you know, it is a huge problem today. You're seeing a lot of issues with it. Um, and part of the reason why it's become a problem is that, you know, technology makes it easier for people to gain this information. We're doing online banking. You know, we're creating these accounts. Our credit cards have, you know, websites now that we can log into. So technology is making it easier for people to go and create identity theft. And a key thing is never post your social security number online. You know, you don't want to do this. Your social security number, it's it's tied to you, you know, and your credit history. So you don't want to be going and posting this online and putting on different websites, you know. It's even your social security card, you know, you don't want to have that information online. That's basically, you know, if you post it online, you're basically giving someone an open door to ruining your credit and you know gaining your identity. So do keep that in mind that keep your social security number private, protect it. You know, it's very important um, for you to make sure you do that. Uh, if you do have your identity um, stolen, it's not an easy process to, you know, go through and get all those charges removed off of your um, credit history. So it's not an easy task. So do keep that in mind that, you know, it's not something easy that we can easily accomplish to have our identity recovered. So do keep that in mind as well. And another issue that um, you know you do see in the news every so often is cyberbullying. So let's jump into the slides and look at cyberbullying. So cyberbullying, uh, basically, you know, if we look at this, this is basically using technology to hurt or embarrass someone. So that's kind of a simple definition of what cyberbullying is. As well, you know, what this can include is, you know, sending an email, you know, text messages, ganging up on people in message boards or forums, and even posting false information about someone. So you can see that cyberbullying, you know, it's basically using technology in a lot of different ways. And I would say a lot of times nowadays, you know, the most common thing that you're hearing about um, cyberbullying is, within social media, you know, and that would kind of be the third bullet point where it's like, you know, message boards and forums, you kind of think of like Facebook in that um, aspect as well. Um, or even sending text messages. You always hear about people, you know, sending someone a text message, and then, you know, that person might send it on to other people. Cyberbullying is a huge problem, and, you know, it's something, you know, we have to be concerned about and be aware of as well. So. Um, you know, what also includes cyberbullying? Well, let's look at some more concrete examples as well. So cyberbullying can include, uh, you know, disclosing personal information about someone, harassment via social media, as I kind of mentioned, like posting information about people on Facebook or even Twitter, 
or even reposting pictures without permission. So you might have received a photo from someone in a text message, you know, and they, you know, you might think, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to send this on later. You know, if you don't have permission, you know, and they don't appreciate it, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, you know, you might think, well, what harm can come of this? There's actually been, you know, articles that you can, if you research online about cyberbullying, you will see that there's articles where, you know, people have committed suicide due to cyberbullying. So it's not like, oh, no one's going to be harmed about it. You know, it, there is that harm as well that will come, um, you know, as well. So do keep that in mind that cyberbullying is a huge issue that we have to worry about today. Um, so let's jump back into the slide and slides and see a little bit about how we can help prevent cyberbullying. So there are different, um, you know, websites that we can look at to help us provide, um, you know, information about cyberbullying. So you can see here, um, you know, stopbullying.gov. If you notice, it does have, um, you know, a .gov in the, the top level domain the TLD, so we know it's actually a trustworthy site, so we can gain information about cyberbullying and everything here as well. And the other one is nobullying.com, and here, you know, as I was saying, there are times that people do commit suicide or, you know, try to commit suicide due to cyberbullying. You can actually go and see that I did post a link for you to look at that you could go and look at six different cases about cyberbullying and the outcomes that have happened due to it. So if you think that cyberbullying is a harmless crime, well, it's not really a harmless crime as, you know, people are harming themselves and committing suicide due to it. So think twice before you go and repost that picture or, you know, you post something that someone might find harassing as well. So thanks and hopefully, you know, this information's been uh, useful for you and we'll see you next time.